is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is iNews Digest, Monday, November 6, 2017. It's just a little experiment. Let's see what kind of feedback I get here. I may start doing these at noon if if I like what I see and I get good good reactions. So in this edition of the iNews Digest, which, by the way, whether I do these videos every day or not like this, the iNews Digest in print, digital, whatever format here uh, is available every day on iState.tv. So that will be done every day. I do these Monday through Thursday, and I also do the iWire daily uh, Monday through Thursday as well. So th the iNews Digest, these are the stories that, well, they're pretty important, but they didn't quite make it to the big stories that will be featured later in the day. So in this edition, Ryan's texting problem, French be tripping, <laughs> literally, and Gov Arms Control needed, and more. So the first story here was Paul Ryan. I bet you thought I was a Republican. Didn't you? I got a nice little ad there. That's great. Our sponsor is United States residents born between 1936 and 1966. Wish they knew this earlier. So if you go to the site and you're interested in that, only if you're interested in that, be sure you click on the ad. And uh, Republicans quickly roll back promise tax cuts. Let's open that puppy up and see. So uh, here comes a new boss, same as the old boss. You voted for the Republicans in 2016. And guess what? If you did, you got the House, you got the Senate and the White House, and now you get to see how similar both parties really are to each other. Last Friday night, November 3rd, House Republicans quietly rolled back some of the promised tax cuts in the so-called tax reform bill currently being worked on under the controlling management of Paul Ryan and his gang of deep state controlled opposition. Yeah, yeah. added that little tag in there. How about this newly released documents reveal CIA sent entire French village on LSD trip. So newly released documents. Uh, it's nothing to see here, folks, other than another example of a crazy conspiracy theory that turned out to be true. Now, if I told you that the CIA sent an entire French village on an LSD trip back in the 50s, you'd probably think it was uh, that I was a bit of a conspiracy theorist, a tin foil hat wearing insaniac. I coined that phrase insaniac. Maybe I didn't, but I'm going to say I did. Well, it turns out that it actually happened. And yes, someone actually has the documents. That's right. Someone has the act documents, and I got this from uh, Activist Post, and it's uh, it's on August 16, 1951. Numerous locals were suddenly stricken with horrifying hallucinations of fire dragons and snakes. And go to iState.tv and, and read the full article there. We go on to our next story here. Oh, no, we went back to that one. We don't want that, so let's... Let's click out of these stories and go to U.S. airstrike in Afghanistan kills 14 civilians, including children. And what I want to know is this. Where? Where is the call for gov weapons control? So right now, while some anti-gunners at home are using the dead bodies of the victims of the Texas church shooting to call for gun control, they have little to say about the violence being perpetrated by government weapons. In this latest example of mass killings by government weapons, it's being reported in anti-war that U.S. airstrikes in Afghanistan killed at least 14 civilians. Those people matter every bit as much as anybody here in America that's the victim of a mass shooting. 14 civilians, which includes four children, during attacks that took place yesterday, Sunday, November 5th, 2017. And the story comes from antiwar.com. And again, for more details, go to iState.tv. Don't sacrifice social media to satisfy your fears of Russia. We did a story on this uh, last week, and uh, I linked to the story 
in our story, but we've written about this topic, uh, and it's it's basically in response to the senator hearings on the social media and Great Russia scare. And what we did here is uh, we we wanted to share an excerpt from a recent article that echoes a lot of the same sentiments that we did. In our article, I'll just read a little part here. Is American society so fragile that a few divisive ads, news stories, commentaries, and even lies perhaps emanating from Russia threaten to plunge it into darkness? The establishment's narrative on Russian election meddling would have you believe that. On its face, the alarm over this is so ridiculous that I doubt any of the fear mongers really believe their own words. No, I'm going to go more than that. I'm going to say no, they absolutely don't believe their words. They, they know darn well what they're doing. They're attempting to provoke public hysteria for political political, geopolitical, and financial gain. There's no more to it than that. And if you go to iState.tv, uh, iState you'll find this article. You'll find a link also to our original article from last week. And in that original article from last week called The Truth Behind the Federal Assault on Social Media, I also put in there that there was a poll that showed uh, uh, it was about 48% that supported or uh, that were against federal intrusion. A full 45% were for it. That means 45% of the country thinks it would be a good idea to let the federal government regulate social media. Mm -hmm. Those are your neighbors, folks. Oh, we got Paul Ryan in the story in the news again. We got Paul Ryan. Well, I went to the wrong article here. Paul Ryan crushes pro-gun bills again. That's, that's, that's what Paul Ryan does. So Paul Ryan appears to be doing the work of preserving gun control by assuring that no impactful pro-gun legislation sees the light of day. Two critical bills, the National Concealed Carry Rep Recip Reciprocity Act and the Hearing Protection Act, have been deliberately shelved by what anyone can only surmise is an anti-gun, anti-liberty, anti-human Speaker of the House. And yes, if you are anti-gun in my book, that puts you down as anti-human because you are against the fundamental human reality of self-defense. China creates massive island maker. China has created, uh, well, here, here you can see it here if you're, if you're looking at the video, Bodie McIsland Maker. Not Bodie McBoatface, Bodie McIsland Maker. China has been using man-made islands to geopolitically position itself to seize more control over the South China Seas. The secret behind that rapid expansion of man-made islands lies in a massive dragger called the Tiwan Hun Hao. The dragger is, in essence, an island maker, and China is expected to, place, uh, to replace it with a bigger one soon. So you can expect more islands from China as China develops island maker tech. Isn't that great? Is Google's deep mind really AI or a good game player? This, this one, this one, I, 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 I called this from, from the Guardian, actually. So a letter from an MIT professor to Google's deep mind team challenges the notion that Google is really creating authentic Artificial intelligence, which I'll put in quotes, artificial intelligence. The writer Sheila Heyman, a director's fellow at MIT Lab, says in her letter that artificial intelligence of the kind Google promotes can play Go and even at a pinch recognize Bach or Picasso. It can never produce Bach or Picasso, still less understand the complexity of social forms and culture that made their lives possible. And I, I encourage you to go to iState.tv and you can... You can read uh, her her article here, her 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 letter here that she wrote to. Uh, uh, it was actually written to the to to the Guardian about their article. High tech brain drain threatens British university research. So let's go on to the next story, which is Volkswagen employs army of metal three D printers in Portugal plant, and this is. This is good news, relatively speaking. I'm I am not so much in favor of large scale anything. I'm not necessarily saying we shouldn't have any large scale anything. So I won't necessarily say that I'm all gung ho about this large scale example. But what I am encouraged about is the fact that Volkswagen is using metal 3D printers to create 1,000 parts using essential. Essentially, a 3D print farm at its plant in Portugal. 3D printing allows for the printing of complex structure and also creates significantly less waste than traditional manufacturing practices. And I have to say that uh, what is that? What this is showing is essentially that 
me, 3D metal printing is coming a long way, and they're starting to produce viable, durable products for use in the commercial market. Pay attention to that. Synthetic microspheres could be key to invisibility. I Now, I love this story. I love these types of stories. That's one of the reasons why I... I choose to, to, to carry them. So we're one step closer to invisible cloaks with the creation of synthetic microspheres that mimic the properties found in the, and, and I just learned what this was today, okay? I'm not a scientist, but in the brachosomes of insects. And the brachosomes apparently are these, well, they're, they're microspheres that allow insects to what what they've what they've discovered essentially is that they, they this is what is used for them to be able to camouflage themselves. The findings come out of Penn State University. Not only could these microspheres be used to create camouflaging material, they may also boost the efficiency of batteries. And I don't quite understand the science of that. Although I did uh, took take take an excerpt from the article from Science Daily. You can. Read that for yourself and try and figure it out. It has something to do with the way that it captures light from all directions. I, I don't I don't know. You read the article and you let me know. Bitcoin regained 60 plus percent of market share. So Bitcoin is back on the rise. I think everybody knows that. It went through that little little burst and everybody keeps calling it's a bubble it's a bubble it's a bubble i'm not saying there isn't a bubble i'm not saying there is either but so far every time you people cry bubble and the bubbles burst it comes back so after seeing the rise of other dur di dur digital currencies in the beginning of this year of uh, 2017 bitcoin saw its market share go down dramatically but now after a surging bitcoin price over the last couple of months bitcoin has reasserted its market dominance and claimed more than 60 percent of the market once again and so this is from Bitcoin News, and they say, as of this writing, Bitcoin has a market dominance of 62.7%. And apparently Ethereum, which was the big comer, is now, it's still second largest, but it's now it's only at 14% uh, of total market capitalization. All right, so we'll go to blockchain under assault by quantum computing uh, maybe i should have put a question mark yes to that because i'm not entirely convinced that the this article is i won't say that this article isn't true but that maybe the conclusions are not true or are true because blockchain even blockchain's going through its own uh changes uh, that that maybe mon I, I maybe could compete with uh, the the quantum computing, but be that as it may, I'll just report it. Before blockchain ever gets a chance to fully become a part of our everyday lives, it might see the rug pulled out from under it by the emergence of the long anticipated, long hyped technology of quantum computing. This technology may offer faster transactions and more more secure environments, as well as the same decentralization blockchain currently offers and i excerpt an article from singularity hub on that as well so you can go to iState.tv and read it do i say that enough i don't know i don't know if i do i promote iState.tv enough learning to fly drones without using drones so this is um if you want to learn how to fly a drone maybe don't start off with that expensive drone you bought yeah, that'd be a good idea. Instead, consider learning how to fly your drone using flight simulation software like Sin City. And and I do have a video attached to it, and I don't have it uh, hooked up so you can actually hear it, so I'm not going to play it. That's something I'll have to remember for the next... Uh, I, I'll probably try to do this uh, show again tomorrow, at least. And then I'll have... I'll, if, if I have videos, I may play some excerpts from videos. But for right now, there is a video which you can find on iState.tv if you look up that story. Learn to fly drones without using drones. Cities trigger rapid evolution in animals thriving on urban landscapes. And, you know, I loved... I'm not going to lie to you. I really liked creating the image for this story. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm 12... Thanks to cities, British tits are evolving. Dude, that's the name of the of the birds. They're called British tits. So I get to put a meme out there. Well, it's not a meme, but I guess it is. Thanks to cities, British tits are evolving. I mean, that is 
That is wonderful. One of the unintended consequences of urban reality on the planet is the evolution of species that are adapting to urban life. Species like the British Great Tits, real name, so like I said, don't blame me, and mosquitoes. So this is from Tech Times. And researchers from the University of Ta Toronto and Fordham Universities, what, what they've basically discovered is that what they give a, they give a couple of examples here. And I just want to cite the British Great Tits. That's right, the British Gate Great Tits. Apparently, their beaks have gotten longer in the last few decades alone uh, as a result of the bird feeders that put people put out for them. So there you go. The law of unattended consequences even affects urban planning. Well, it affects the very existence of, of cities in the, in, in the first place. And we're going to end this with Bjork to give altcoin to every album purchaser. Now, I do want to let you know that uh, Bjork does have a new album out. And you guys know, many of you who visit the site regularly know that I do my my top 100 music countdown. And I just want to let you know her her I, I'm, her latest song from Utopia. Ah, it's okay. I like it. But uh, it didn't make the top 100. It didn't make PG's top 100. But be that as it may, Bjork, the indie icon of the 90s, is launching a new album with a digital twist. She'll be offering free cryptocurrency to anyone that buys her album, Utopia. Buyers will receive 100 free audio coins, which is currently valued at 0.004 cents. That's our, yeah, yeah. Well, no, no, wait, yeah, yeah, 0 0.004 cents. That's four-tenths of a penny to you and me. So there you have it, folks. This is our, let me, let me go up to the, to the header here so you can see this again. This is our iNews Digest story of the day, Monday, November 6, 2017. My name is Paul Gordon with iState.tv. We will see you the next time we make a video. But remember... Okay, just remember, I had a thing queued up to play, but apparently it's not queued up right. So anyway, remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell so you get the notice for the next time we make a video. This is, I hope you enjoyed this experiment. I hope when I listen back to it, I enjoy it too.